New on Curiosity Stream. She was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's impossible escapes. Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Hey, all it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on Radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. Hello, there we go. Welcome to season 15, episode number 3,382. Along with Steve the Throw Hill, the Ted Smith, Woo! and my car. Montgomery! And you are in the men's room. On tap today, the return of Who Sucks Less. We will play Profile This. Plus headlines, the men's room shout of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Tim. The clock. You're going to drive. All right, here we go. America's highest earning prostitute sues the state of Nevada because COVID shut her business down. In Brussels, the second sex party has been shut down due to COVID. Partygoers are sent home to punch the clown. Emo on the loose in Pennsylvania avoids capture as it can run 30 miles an hour. One thing COVID sure shows Americans, their binge-drinking superpower. And Cleveland online class is canceled as a teacher is robbed during the Zoom session. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. All up, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, you know, like most people, I'll, I'm quick to tell you, yeah, I'm up for a challenge or... That I'll give something the old college try. However, as I get older, it really depends on what that challenge is. For example, am I up for the challenge of trying to outrun a freight train on foot? No. No, I am not. Well, 46-year-old man in Texas, he felt differently. He tried to outrun the train while walking his dog. He tried, but he didn't. The train hit him. In Brooklyn, a man was hit by a Lamborghini. Now, to be fair, this particular guy was consciously attempting to jump over the Lambo as it sped toward him. But like the guy trying to outrun the train, he failed. And of course, not every failure is tied to you being a dumbass. Sometimes you simply, you're just trying to excel at the thing that you've been training for. We go to Russia, home of the Eurasian Weightlifting Championship. 20-year-old competitor there, he attempted to squat 550 pounds. Well, on his third attempt... His leg snapped audibly, and he crumpled to the ground under the weight. It was pretty brutal, but again, squatting 550 pounds, it has its own inherent risk. And he understood that it was, in fact, a challenge. Now, some things, they don't seem like they're going to be challenging at all. Like, say you're 21 years old, you grab your 21-year-old friend, and you agree to rob an 80-year-old woman. Two uh, two 21-year-olds in France, they attempted to do exactly that. They even brought a gun along for a little added insurance. What they did not know was that their 80-year-old Mark is also what they call a martial arts master. 
things did not end well for these two young men. But we've all been there. That moment of overconfidence that came back to bite us in the ass. And today, it's the nature of our men's room fill-in-the-blank question. I fought the blank and the blank one. Be part of the big show called 206 rock Like the Men's Room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live. And send those emails to the Men's Room at KISW.com. New on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future and... Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight. See how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Well, great balls of fire, Bubba. What happened, Bilford? That crazy son of a sow blew right through that four-way stop of Main Street and plowed into my cowboy Cadillac. Your what? My pickup truck. And I'm pretty sure my leg is broken, Ted. Oh, quit your bitching, Bilford, and talk with those side busters at the Advocates Law Firm. When I got busted up last month, well, shoot, they made sure those snakes at the insurance company played fair. Boy, howdy. Even that creepy so-and-so Kyle earned his keep. So if you get injured, the Advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com. The men's room returns with Miles and Thrills. 99.9 KISW. Oh, the show's that away we go. Welcome to season 15, episode number 3,382 with a large and charge program for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Guaranteed future repeat. Exciting return of uh, Who Sucks Less? Steve, the thrill. You bring us three stories from the news each and every week. Correct. Uh, they all suck. It's up to us to uh, determine of the three, which of the three suck the least. How are we looking on the today's story? I think all three are funny, but I'm glad I'm not involved in any of them. I would call this the uh, the friendly skies edition. So oh. all of these take place on an airplane. Okay. Um, there is some similarities in each scenario, but each one is definitively its own. So in this okay. case, one of those things, which one would I want to deal with the least? I'm even just afraid yeah. to go to the airport at this point. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen there, if it's going to be crazy or not, but, you know, it just seems a little bit uh, a little bit sketchy at this point in time, right? That's well, it depends why you go. Now, in England, uh, some people, they got hit to, uh, so they have a lot of restrictions like we do here in uh, Washington. So they couldn't go to bars. So they bought the cheapest possible one-way ticket. Say it's like 49 bucks. They would go through security, and then they would go to the bars, and they would sit there and drink. They never got on the flight. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah. That was a big thing. And then uh, authorities there started getting hip to it, going like, all right, so we've sold out a flight. There's only eight people on the plane, but there are 250 people in the bar. Okay. Did you see about the meals? No. All right. So it, it, some pubs are open, but you have to order, quote, a heavy meal or a hearty meal. You can't All just right. go in there and order, like, four a or bag mozzarella, of chips and mozzarella sticks or whatever. Now, you got to buy, but people are not eating. Of course. They, they're not. just going. They're ordering the food. And, like, the people who are running the place are like, hey, uh, if you're not going to eat it, that's okay. But but let us know. You know, like, we'll, right. we'll wrap it up. We'll, we'll, we'll give it to somebody who could use the food. They're leaving full plates of food. Nobody's touching anything. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah it depends. Now, look, if we found a bar where, where that's the racket they've got, and they go, look, you guys keep showing up, and you're not eating any of your food. Like, look, why don't we set up something that you can help the homeless with this? You can feed the hungry. I will buy the food right. as long as I can get the beer. I just don't know why you wouldn't take it home. Well, exactly. You're paying for the food. It's a sandwich or something. Right, so well, what? Take it the exact What if it's veggie grill? We now have a liquor license. Like, look, I'm not eating any of this crap, but I want your booze. And then I have made a donation, take the food that I bought and give it to whoever whoever decides they want it. So I'm, I'm okay with it. The airport is strange. I flew this summer, drank beers at a uh, uh, with, with the burrito place. I don't know if it was a Taco Del Mar. Or All right. Chipotle, like, like, there's only one bar that was open and it was packed. Oh, really? So the line was so long. I was like, I guess I'll just stop here at this taco place and drink beers. Why not? Do they have beers at the taco place? They do. Oh, it was no just problem. awkward sitting in like a fast food joint drinking a beer. I'd fight through it, man. I would too. It's all about, man, especially yeah. at the airport. Like, no, no, no. I need a drink. This is the airport. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, on to the question today. We're going to do a little men's room blank question. Uh, I fought the blank and the blank one. Sometimes you win, uh, sometimes you lose. And this isn't always necessarily about getting into a, a physical altercation with someone else. Look, you might think that you could tackle that project at home. 
uh, putting a new faucet on your sink and realize that uh, maybe that's not your skill level. Maybe you, uh, with, with your best efforts, you know what I mean? You probably need to call a professional. I know that to tackle in advance. Him, you know, but uh, things didn't work out. We start with this one. An 80-year-old woman fended off two 21-year-old thieves who are trying to raid her home in France by using her martial arts skills. Ooh! Two 21-year-old men uh, appeared at criminal court on Friday for assaulting and attempting to steal from her home in a southern region of France uh, called, uh, oh, this is according to France Bleu. I'm sure you nailed that. It emerged that the men both from... Uh, go ahead. Go for it. Uh, France Jean had thought the woman was wealthy. I did take French two years in high school. I don't Did remember. you for real? I don't remember. I can tell. You are terrible. I don't remember any of it. Jesus, man. Yeah, I'm the worst. That's two years worth. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, Monsieur. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> uh, one of the gentlemen, a former legionnaire, was wearing a motorcycle helmet, was carrying a semi-automatic pistol when he rang the doorbell. The gun has not been found. Woman who is Belgian and has been described as a, quote, master in martial arts by French media, opened the door, and was confronted by one of the two men. She didn't just open the door, Miles. She also opened that can of whip-ass. Uh, or the can of kung fu. Uh, instead of retreating, she kicked him in the testicles <laughs> before punching him several times, according to <laughs> France Bleu. As the man tried to contain her, she reportedly struggled as much as she could before screaming loudly. That alerted neighbors. <laughs> Three people came running to help, and as they arrived to help, uh, reports say the man attempted to grab the jewelry the elderly lady was wearing, but to no avail. He then fled, joining the other man who was reportedly waiting on a stolen motorcycle in front of the home. They drove off without having stolen anything. Driver of the motorcycle, a former soldier, was mm -hmm. arrested last week after the discovery of several of his fingerprints at the scene. The other guy was a legionnaire. The other man who uh, confronted the woman has been sentenced five times in the past, including spending three years in prison for aggravated theft before being released last April. He now reportedly faces up 20 years in prison, uh, so asked uh, for a trial postponement in court to prepare his defense. Both men have uh, been uh, in custody as they do await trial. Meanwhile, the 80-year-old one, uh, she sustained some wounds to her hands in the attack and has now been given 30 days of uh, ITT, which means time off of work due to her injuries. That is correct. She's 80? She's going to work every day, but she got 30 days off because she was uh, injured trying to defend I feel like herself. if we had an 80-year-old employee and they said, hey, man, listen, can I take some time off because I'd, I'd beat the living piss out of two 21-year-olds who tried to rob me. But sure. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> badass. Yeah. Right? I mean, like they always say, you know, if you're going to target anyone, they target the elderly. I mean, anywhere in the animal kingdom, particularly if it involves mammals, right? So here's the lion. The lion's the king of the jungle, even though they don't live in the jungle. And it's a badass. It still goes after the old or the young. Right. right. I mean, what, they do not try to square off of what they perceive to be the healthy, which would be the 21-year-old guys. I, I, yeah, that, but they got their ass kicked right. by an 80-year-old woman who well, happened to be a martial arts master. You showed me the video somewhere here in the States. I believe somewhere on the East Coast, but same thing. An older dude, maybe 60, 65 years old, younger guy. I don't know if he's trying to mug him or if he's just harassing him. But it turns out the older guy is also a former boxer, which the younger guy did not know. So the old guy's like, leave me alone, man. Mm -hmm. Time to like, shut the F up, blah, blah, blah. And this old guy turns around and just his posture when he stood like. You knew. This guy's professional because you don't stand like that unless you know what you're doing. That's why I don't stand you like that. You could see where his hands were. You and, knew exactly what he was doing. And he blew this dude up, man. It yeah. was just one hit. This guy dropped and I'm like. Anyone who yeah. makes uh, a no sandwich, you know, gets up like this, I know they know what they're doing. You know what I mean? And, and there was a, a Watch guy, your feet. There was a guy, Ted, uh, on Twitter, yeah. uh, one of a comedian I follow, and he said that, uh, he said, man, when I grew up in every black neighborhood, there was a karate man. Every neighborhood had a karate man. You knew who he was. Oh, the black neighborhood, yeah, absolutely. He's like, yeah. he's like we wondered if they still existed. But here's the like, thing about the black karate still man. Still have a karate man. The black karate man, at the point that you meet him, he's never like 25 years old. He's now, always already 70. Oh, yeah. And there's something about him that's crazy, and you're not sure if he's telling the truth or not. He's willing to fight anybody, mm -hmm. but no one fights him because he's silly. But there's never been a young black karate man. You know what? When, when I was growing up, uh, the karate men uh, in our neighborhood, right? They never buttoned up their shirt. I don't know if it was the style at the time, but it was always mm -hmm. like their shirt was always open. Karate Man, and where I grew up, always had like an open shirt. Like you could always yes. see his chest. Why, why is why, that? Why, I'm just, I'm curious. If you're is the Bruce Lee dressed like that? I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like Chuck I mean, Norris. You've never seen Chuck Norris with a top button. It's always like you can see some of Chuck's yeah, Chuck chest. Norris dresses very conservatively, and we know who he is. Mm -hmm. you know, there's the whole legend of everything Chuck Norris can do. 
I get Bruce Lee, but like just because you know karate does not mean you are Bruce Lee. Look, I like the Baltimore Ravens. I do not show up and work in shoulder pads. Sure. Like, if you wore a jumpsuit, you, you wouldn't have a shirt underneath but I'm, it, I would. and it would be half zipped down. But I think the sports you watch dictate some of your style. Okay, to a degree, all right? So yesterday, the Ravens played last night. Thank God they won. My lucky underwear. Uh, but I put on a Ravens jersey. But to me, that's just standard fare. That's no, no, no. I don't mean that. I mean, like... When I wear a cup, all that kind of stuff. No, but I feel like if you watch, like, basketball or American football, you might take some... Some nods from people. Put it this way. There's eight brands in, in Europe that I never knew of until I got into soccer. And yes, now you I told really me about like this. Them. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. But I also want to start using fashion them. brands. I feel like if the fashion brand, the Karate Man uh, shop that said, look, it's a button-up shirt, just you don't have the top three buttons, I'd be like, right. okay, I get it. But the buttons are there. Well, and trust me, I have nothing to base this Bruce Lee theory on. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. He was the top... Like a uh, martial arts guy, it's like, we should dress like him. But karate people also do have a little bit of that uh, Russian tracksuit influence. You know what I mean? Like where the top matches the bottoms? If it's karate man, yes. Not the average bottom. No shirt underneath it. Right. Just the jacket. But it's still zipped down. But that's karate man. That's karate man. Right. You know what I mean? That's not 18-year-old, hey man, I'm a black belt in karate. That's karate. When they turn 70... Then something happens, like, I don't need a shirt. I don't need a jacket. Being at a, my cousin's wedding, and his friend had gotten into karate. All right. And he talked about it nonstop, the drunker he got. But he kept calling it, no, man, it's karate. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus oh God. Christ. Well, the thing about a karate man, and we all know this to be true, is you never know when one is lurking. Because karate man doesn't tell you he's a karate man. Mm. Sometimes they do. But for the most part, when you do know someone is a karate man, you look at them and you go, God, they kind of look out of shape. You know what I mean? Like, he couldn't right, get they got a beer around. belly. I mean, like, look, we there's no to, definition. We used to work with this guy named Drep in uh, Baltimore. Great guy, right? Karate yeah. man his whole life. He's karate man. You would not know. He's a I did not know that till right now. But he looked. But he was like a red belt. Oh, yeah. he might have even been a black belt. But this I, yeah. guy, he was just a big guy. Huh. But if he knows he's that he a laughy guy, physically beat your ass like punching you. But, but there's but, no definite. Like he's chunky. Right. He knows it. But it's like, the moment you talk to him, he's like, "Well, it wasn't too much of a problem, you know? I'm an eighth degree black belt." You're like, "Wait, what?" Yeah. But you, my whole life, yeah. he had no. There was no tip. You know what I mean? There was no cauliflower ears, no mm-hmm. stockiness, no. You know what I mean? This you just you know when you see someone if they can fight or not. But with a karate man, you got no idea. You know what I mean? That, that, I mean, I think a lot of martial arts that way. There's a I, there's a lot of jujitsu because I know pe- they can whip. It's like why there's big, a lot big, jujitsu guys that you would if you're going to pick on somebody you'd be like oh, he's a tiny little fella. No worries. Okay, but, but, now see the older I've gotten, and, and I say this all the time now. I'm not trying to start a fight with anyone because ever since MMA has become a thing, everyone has done some training with MMA. (laughs) I haven't. So I'm like, look, whatever the deal, this guy probably knows something that's going to F my day up. I think karate is the ultimate torture. Why? Because, all right, so ideally in this world, number one, like anything else, let's just say, Ted, that you won the public soccer championship with a goal. God. All right. Let's say you're back. To one day, soccer. one day, I'm gonna you race just, that cup. You just, you know what I mean. You, you head one in. And All right. Last second I like in, this, man. All right, boom. You're telling everybody. You're goddamn right. Your skills are back, man. You're. I'm playing. not showing up to work on Monday. Game winning goal. <laughs> I'm a champion. Right. Okay. And w- what if you uh, knew you were fluent in French? All right. When you went to Europe, oui. where would you want to go? France. Right. And if you couldn't get to France, you'd probably go to Quebec or Montreal or something, just so you could. Yeah, yeah, communicate. Communicate. yeah well, North Africa, one of those karate countries. man. First of all, he can't tell you he's karate man. He can't brag about it. He can't tell you he had a goal. And the only goal of his is to avoid confrontation at all, all costs. Yeah. So you never use. It'd be like, I know I'm fluent in French, but I, I have been kicked out of France and I can never speak the language. I can never. Go and then it doesn't matter. Right. It's just like. But the I, difference is, one, you can't speak French despite of your two years, as we just experienced. But sure. also, we oui, we. Oui. You can sit down and be like, man, I am fluent and for, I've, I've known French my entire life. My general response, I don't care. Now, if you sat down and said, <laughs> right, okay, yeah. like, yeah. okay yeah. good for you. But if you say, I'm the karate man, like, ooh, then I have all the questions. Mm-hmm. Like, karate man, just by being karate. And that, that might be the other reason, like, you don't want to say karate man, because instantly everyone's like, you ever beat someone up? Can I try to punch you? How do you do a le-? Like, all that dumb crap they don't feel like hearing. Okay. I believe there's I, truth to that. I would want to beat someone's ass if I knew karate. Just be like, yeah, I know I could connect with that. Not beat their ass, but I would want to be, and that's the problem. I think I'd like, I would, okay, I would want someone to just start talking crap with me. And then be like, all right, it's time for me to whip out my karate man stuff. And then I know for a fact I'd just get my ass beat. What if the other guy is another karate man? 
You don't know it's another Karate Man, but now you're like, karate man, I get to put man. my Karate Man to use because this guy won't See, stop running He broke Karate way. Man code. Right. I shouldn't know that he's Karate Man. You know what I mean? It should all be a big surprise. You can't be Karate Man. I know I can't be Karate Man. You tell me around. If everybody. I was Karate you'd Man. You'd brag about being a white belt. If like, I, bro, you bought a gi if, and a belt. I'm a white belt. If I was Karate Man, I'd still get beat up by Joe Schmo <laughs> in the bar. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, damn it, I was in that dojo for seven years, man. Finally got a chance to get in a fight, right? Got my ass kicked. Yeah, man, because you weren't, you weren't man. buying into what the sport or what the martial art I is. didn't think about being on the ground that quickly, Ted. <laughs> no, <laughs> it did not. You were, were, you were building to get in a skills. fight. You weren't, you weren't ingesting the martial art. I see. The discipline. Well, when I got on the ground, I was just screwed. Thank basically. you, Yoda. <laughs> yeah, right. so I'm, so, well, that's part of martial about. arts. Right. It's like you train, but you never want to be in there. You're coming in with the wrong mindset, man. What's the right mindset? You just want to learn. Oh. Maybe teach others. Oh. How long do you think it takes for that mindset to, to kick in? Because, do you think this was the first time this 80-year-old 80, like, 80 woman ever opened up a can of Kung Fu? Well, there's don't get me wrong. Maybe. There's competitions and stuff. You could use your skill set. But I'm just saying, like, How the long? idea of training just to get into a bar fight, like, you've missed the point of the martial arts. I art. understand it, but to be able to defend myself. In other words, I don't want to carry a gun. But how long does it I just take want to for be able people to, defend myself if to I absorb defend that? It. Because if you take a kid to karate, I know eventually they will learn, right. as you would say, Ted, the martial art way, but... I can't believe you take like eight year old boy to a karate class. You know what he wants to do? He wants to beat the piss out of yeah. him. Well, sure. Now, how long do you think it takes to convince them that? Because look, my thought is you're eight years old. I took karate, took two classes. You go to school. Recess is different. You, uh, man, you are. I don't dying. know. If it's a kid. That's it's tough. like winning the lottery right. and saying I'm putting all of my money in the bank. I'm not going to spend a dime. It's like it's like let's just say. Well, part of it too is that when you actually spar in these sports, sure, you're going to get hit and stuff. So it, I don't want to fight that, another karate man. Lord, I want to beat like your ass. Be right, like but the idea of being in a fight really loses its fun when you got punched in the face a few times. That would be like being the master of Kama Sutra, right? Like you are it. Like you know all sure. the things you could teach everyone. But to be the master, you can never engage in sex. In <laughs> right. any like, of yeah. these principles. And what do I need to know? Right. That's what I'm saying. You know what this is like? I can't do it. This is like taking calculus That's in high school. That's karate, man. It's like reading Shakespeare in high school. Yes. This will never, right. ever matter in your life. Do you think at 80 years old this was the first time that she actually had to open up a can of Kung Fu? 80, I'm going to say this is the second time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you could use it when you need it. Right. <laughs> Men's room blank question. I fought the blank and the blank one. 206 421 Rock. New on Curiosity Stream, she was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's Impossible Escapes, Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Bro, gnarly. What's up, Taylor? Dude, that nerd in his electric hybrid totally blew the light while texting his yuppie friends. That's so bogus, bro. Are you hurt? Yeah, like I can't move my hips, bro. I think I broke my pelvis, man. Dude, no way. way. Taylor, you need to drop a dime and talk with the lawyers at the Advocates Law Firm. No way. Can't afford that, bro. Your crotch is broken, man, and they don't earn any money unless they win your case. Dude, no way. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact me today at advocateslaw.com. The men's room is in progress. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. Arizona man attempted to remove a beehive from his backyard. Decided to do it all uh, by himself. Yuma County Sheriff's Office was called to the man's home on Sunday evening after he had been stung multiple times, according to the press. Man is identified as 51 year old uh, Epigamino Gonzalez. That's French who was covered with bees in his front yard when deputies arrived. First responders then sprayed Gonzalez with water to allow medics to take him to the hospital. He later died at the Yuma Regional Medical Center. According to the sheriff's office, it is unclear how many times that he was uh, stung. Deputies learned that Gonzalez had tried to remove the hive from a couch that was behind his home before the agitated bees attacked him. Our men's room blank question, I fought the blank in the blank one, 206-421-ROCK. 
Hello, Robin. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, how's it going, boys? Hola. Hey, so uh, I fought the mountain in the mountain one, I would say. Okay. Are we talking the mountain? Uh, we're talking Crystal Mountain. Okay. Yeah, so uh, a few years ago, fresh out of high school, I was uh, I was an instructor up there for just, you know, snowboarding instructor for kids. Anyhow, um, all us instructors, we kind of, you know, tried to out-cool each other, you know, doing tricks and stuff like that. And Anyhow. What is, uh, uh, let me ask you a question before you continue. What is the lingo for teaching kids when it comes to snowboarding? Because as we learned, not as kids, as adults, uh, the lingo to teach is pizza and, and french fries. For, for skiing. For skiing. Yeah. So yeah, what, yeah. what is that equivalent for kids if you're snowboarding well, and instructing? There's not as much of it, really, when it comes to snowboarding. Um, the pizza and the french fries one was really drilled into my head, too, just because of all these kids that were getting taught skiing nearby. But, uh, yeah, we, we, you know, we have names for tricks. There's butter. There's some other things. But uh, for the most part, especially when you're teaching kids, you just tell them what you want them to do. All right. <laughs> Save the cool for okay, later. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. They got to learn that stuff themselves. Um, anyhow, there was a, a certain day when um, there was, like, a, a blizzard that was rumored to come in and looked like it was coming in. So we canceled class for the kids and um, sent them home. And, uh, but us instructors stayed up there, you know, and, um, I was, I thought I'd be the cool guy, try to out cool everybody by going up to the, the peak, um, during this blizzard, which it's, it's not even there anymore. I think an avalanche took out that lift, but Jesus. anyhow, we, uh, I go up there and, um, sure enough, if it's become a blizzard, I'm the only one dumb enough to be out there. And I definitely, uh, overestimated how cool I was. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm bombing down this hill and it's so it's so snowy I can't see a thing. And um as I'm going, I see this, you know, bright green neon sign whip past me. It's a circle. And uh if you're up there snowboarding a lot, you recognize that as the sign that says cliff and it is placed at the edge of the cliff so you don't go off. Well, anyways, I blasted right by it. And uh yeah, I was just in the air, falling off cliff, didn't know how high I was because uh, it was so, you know, white. I couldn't see where the ground was, so I just kind of braced for impact. And, uh, yeah, I bent my knees, and when I hit the ground, finally, felt like it was like a four- or five-second fall, but who knows, you know. And uh, my knees went straight into my face. Oh. Uh, yeah, pretty good. I ended up breaking my nose, but... I still had to, you know, cruise the rest of the way down the mountain. So I finally get to the uh, bottom to the lodge where all my buddies are at. And they're all like, you know, where's Robin at? Oh, my gosh, he's been out there for a little while. And, uh, yeah, I come through the door, and I guess I was quite a scene because I didn't realize how much blood there was, and it had all been freezing <laughs> while I was flying down the mountain and kind of running all over the place. So I had all this frozen <laughs> blood all over me. And, uh, yeah, needless to say, some of these guys were freaking out when I opened the door. I'm sure I looked like hey, some sort of monster. Robin, yeah, Robin, for sure. Did you ever get a chance in, in conditions where you could see to go back to that spot to kind of try to figure out where you went over? Yeah, yeah well, we actually all went up there because we were like, man, that's a gnarly story. Let's, you know, see it. And the thing we think kind of saved me because it was a pretty good cliff. How high um, do you think it was? Oh, uh, well, that's like asking me to tell you what size fish I caught. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I'm going to shave 20 feet off of whatever you say. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably like uh, 40, 50. Okay. It's Whoa. It's hard to tell. I've never really jumped off any cliffs and, you know, had a good reference for it. But, um, yeah, the thing that we thought saved me was that where I'd flown out, I'd landed out of bounds, like where nobody goes. So the snow was all really fluffy and nice there for me to land, um, as opposed to like compacted down. We, uh, Robin, we had a coworker many years ago, uh, and this was not a Crystal. This was up in Alpental, who was doing the same thing backcountry. Oh, for the record, if you've never been to Crystal, like top of that mountain when it's snowing is frightening. Well, you're on Mount Rainier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you could look right at it, and then uh, yeah. We should also point out about this coworker that Miles is about to tell you about. He's not a snowboarder. He started that year. Right. He, he was another guy that snowboarded. Okay. Well, he went off. amateur snowboarder. Got he, it. He right. basically went off a waterfall. And I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I just. I can tell you because I was up there the same day. It was Cinco de Mayo. And they were out of bounds. Right. Which, 
during the winter is one thing, or like in the backcountry. But as far as avalanches and things like that are but concerned. Right, but it's Cinco de Mayo. So you, the, the mountain was still open, but there's just crevices and everything. that it opened. So like they had probably taken this route before, but now that giant hole was open. And yeah, he fell hundreds of feet into a waterfall. How he'd live down, is beyond down, me. Chasing right. I mean, helicopter, powers. everything. And this guy does voice. How long was he they, gone? They wired his mouth for months. His jaw was shut. Yeah. Which, if you knew him, was kind of a benefit. But part of it is still on the guy that took him out there. You got to be smarter than that. Yeah. Is it what I'm thinking? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. That sounds like some hard and fast character building. Robin, by the way, I hope even after you got hurt, you stopped at the uh, Natchez Tavern and got some beers. Yeah, that's actually where. Is that the one that's at the bottom? <laughs> yeah, down in Green Greenwater. That's yes. That's <laughs> that we did stop there. It's kind of funny you brought that up. I like that little. Uh, I like that. I like that little lodge that has the little grocery store in it. You know, where you can stay the night, and it's got like you know frozen lasagna or whatever, and oh yeah, bag salad, and you just you know. Yeah, you got to stop fire. by Greenwater on the way up. That's a must. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I love that little bar. Damn. Our men's are in blank question. I fought the blank and the blank one. 206 421 Rock. Off subject. I think it was yesterday. Mike was like, damn, man, you have the most random knowledge of little pubs and bars and all over. And bars. Mm -hmm. Oh, children? Yeah, I know where to go. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's really, I'm going to go to some tiny ass place that I've never heard of before in Washington or Oregon. Hey, Ted, man, we're going to take the family to a. Uh, uh, oh, dude, you got to stop okay. it. <laughs> Dr. Jangles Beer Hut, man. I'm in Buckley. Ooh, Buckley, yeah. Firehouse, is that one still there? Yeah. Yep, I got wasted there a okay. few times. All right, let's see what else. Uh, you got another by, by the way, if you're snowing at Crystal, if you're riding at Crystal when you're coming down, you drive right by the Snatches Tavern, and it, it's in Greenwater, but you could literally, like, uh, put a hot dog in the fire and cook it. Okay. Oh, okay. How about uh, Renton? Uh, I'd probably go to the spot. Okay. <laughs> How about Issaquah? Oh, uh, Joker Pub. Okay. Yeah. North Bend. Oh, North Bend Bar and Grill every day no of the problem. week. Okay. Get the blackened, uh, blackened salmon Caesar salad. Wenatchee. Ooh, Wenatchee's a tough one. I mean, you could you on the way out there, you could stop at the 59er Diner. Okay. But I'd probably head up Route 2 a little bit to the Squirrel Tree Inn. How about uh, Auburn? <laughs> what, Auburn? Auburn. Man, I haven't been to Auburn in a while. I'm trying to remember where I... I think the place we used to go is closed. I th is it number... That was a sports bar, right? Yeah. Okay, that was That's pretty a good. Tough though. one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, you did well. Oh, I'm impressed. <laughs> oh well. Either stop here, but if you go all the way to the city. <laughs> Men's room blank question. I fought the blank and the blank one. Two zero six four two one rock. Hello, Harrison. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. All right. So I was uh, up at uh, Mount Baker at some stash up. They built a big jump up there and had a bunch of kegs and stuff. Everybody gets all all lit up there and it was a good time. And I built a bunch of snowballs and put them in a the cooler. And I was underage, and I was kind of lit, so uh, my buddy drive me down the mountain. And I decided to throw snowballs at the back of somebody's car in front of us, and I uh, hit their car. They didn't like that too much, so they jumped on trying to try to get at me. We tried to evade them. They tried pit maneuvering us and chasing us down some neighborhood. Ended up uh, stopping at the end of a cul-de-sac, and the guy jumped in, tried to pull my buddy out of the truck that was driving me, and I thought that I'd pull the guy out. But he was a black belt, and he uh, <laughs> curb stopped me into the ground. Oh, Karate man. Yeah, karate he's man. He's been waiting is, for yeah. you. Yeah, Tell right. me, he's been waiting for you. He oh, knew he's those karate skills. Man. Did he hit you like with a karate shot or anything like that? Or I mean, like oh, the side of his hand? Or was it, what was the, uh, what I was don't know. He, he chased me around the truck, and that's the last thing I remember. Apparently, he just curb shot me into the ground, and I was knocked out for who knows how long. So wait, oh. The whole point of martial arts, as we were talking about earlier, is so that, you know, you can de-escalate a situation, you know? Have that, that inner confidence and understand that you don't need to be in... You hit a guy's car with a snowball, which is no offense. If you're driving a car and it has snowed, don't you assume your car is going to get hit once or twice? Like, mm -hmm. Look, well, it's one thing if they put a rock in it or an ice ball. It's like, it's a snowball. I it assume if I'm driving home through my own neighborhood in a snowstorm, the, the snowball. local kids are going to throw I can't believe that a guy that's taken the time to become a black belt, the thing that set him off is that his car was hit with a snowball after it had snowed. Like, you well, count the best, on that. The best part is I hit the back, of his, the back of his car and he said I broke his front windshield. Oh, come oh, on. Yeah. Look, yeah, man, even there either, either, maybe there may be two or three times in the 15, 16 years that we've been here. It's no downtown. Right? Okay. Yeah. And you walk downtown and people are having snowball fights at the bus stop. Yeah, there were snowballs all the they're, time. They're throwing across the street at people they don't know. Drawing penises on cars. Yeah. It, it's just, it, it, <laughs> That's it, you. It's like this, man. It's like, once again, <laughs> everybody's Steve. If it's snow, it's game on. Snowball, it's game on. 
Yeah, I've never understood. Like I said, there's always a kid that would put a rock in it or the would have had him a freezer made an ice ball. That's different. Mm-hmm. But that kid was always that kid. It's one of those But games. everyone else, like, look, man, you throw a snowball and hit someone, I fully expect you to throw a snowball back. If you hit my right. car with a snowball, I don't care. It's what people do. It's but the, some people are just hotheads. I right? know. Right. I, it's a, I'm with you. It's a child. Who cares? That's but. the other thing. Chances are it's someone who is a minor. Yeah. I'm not going to get out of the car and go beat the living hell out of some cake if you throw a snowball. Even if car. you take a hike, right? And you get up to the snow line of a mountain. Oh, snowball fun. First thing you do is you grab a snowball. Yeah, you make a snowball. I mean, it's the game that's you always can't on. Not do the it. only game that's always on like that is like the punch bug game. Yeah, but yeah, you I mean, have to know you're playing punch bug. You, no, you don't. Snowballs, you don't. You just yeah, like the you person. Do. You, you do. Just, you have a theory that you don't. <laughs> no. You do. You could punch the person beside you. Yeah, not if, if I'm not one. playing. Well, yeah, but the, it's, a, it's a game that's always on. You can't tackle but someone in the stands. you're the only one sane. <laughs> right. If you punch me, I'll punch you back. Right. But you got to see another Volkswagen, see? No, I mean, that, that's not what he's saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have an open boxing So match. the snowball's okay, but punch buck, that's all. That's, that's, yes. that's, yes. crossing, that's crossing the line. It's like when I got caught in that game of T-Twisters that nobody told me I was involved in. Like, <laughs> well, I that's punched, a different one. But I punched one of my cousins. He's like, you're not supposed to punch me. He's like... You Dude, grabbed my nipple. Right? Nobody told me this game was happening. You can't just grab my nipple. My daughter, one Christmas, man, we rented a house in Mexico. We cannot find her. We are freaking the F out. Now, we had just walked into the house. She's nowhere to be found. Everyone's sweating. We're screaming her name, running around the house. Finally find her. She's behind the Christmas tree. All right? It's a great hiding space. But we didn't know where she was. And as a parent, you know, my hands are shaking, man. It's, it's an intense moment. Said I was playing hide and go seek. I said, baby, the way this game works is we have to know. Mm-hmm. That you, otherwise, we call it my kid's missing. In Mexico. And we're in Mexico. I'm in a foreign country, in and I cannot find my child. <laughs> That's what the game is this that is we a, were playing. This is a Lifetime movie. Right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> right. This game was much different for me. So if we don't know you're playing hide and go seek, you're simply missing. Our men's are in blank question. I fought the blank and the blank one. 206-421-ROCK. <laughs> Hello, Lisa. Welcome to the men's room. <laughs> Hola. Hola. How are you guys? We're doing great, thank you. Oh, actually, not so great, Ted. We got tragic news. The 59er diner burned down. Oh. Oh, no. No way. No, that's all right. Someone just let me know. They're not sure if they've rebuilt it, but it burned down. I think, I hope they rebuilt it. All right, we'll keep going up the road till you hit the squirrel tree. <laughs> so back to you, Lisa. <laughs> what did you okay. fight? Um, so basically, I, uh, bought a car, a car one. I used to work at Jiffy Lube and uh, was replacing the, uh, like an air filter in a car. Um, and it was kind of an odd angle. It was like pretty far down there and I dropped a bolt in the engine compartment and the hood was held up by a, uh, by like hydraulic hood support. Okay. Well, the, wind was bl- the wind was blowing and it <clears throat> fell down on top of me and I couldn't get out of it. How much damage did it do when it fell down on top of you? Well, I mean, I was, it alarmed me for one. I was frustrated in general. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I get slammed in the head and, like, stuck underneath this hood. I mean, I was okay, but my pride was hurt. <laughs> yeah. Did you need outside help to get the hood off, or could you manage to get yes. to it? Yes. So you no, were trapped under outside. the hood. How much of you was under the hood? Probably, like, I was bent um, over the, like, the, the side of it. So basically the top half of my body. <laughs> well, your feet weren't touching the ground, I guess, or you would have been able to get out of there, right? Well, no, I, I mean, they, well, I was on my tiptoes. Okay, right. so your co-workers so, come up. a lot of strength behind It looks me. like the car is eating you. If I'm from the outside looking in, the car is now trying to eat you. Is this right? Yes, that is exactly what it looked like. And I was alone outside with, uh, <laughs> at the moment because we were kind of slow. And no, it took a, I, I want to say it, it felt like it took forever but it had to have been just maybe a minute, a solid minute of me sitting there, like, trying to get enough strength to push myself up. And because it was a heavy hood, it was a very heavy hood. What kind of car was this? And it did not want to co- open. What? What kind of car? I want to say it was some kind of older, like, it was an older one. I'm picturing a big, big ass a, hood, right, old like car. A, like a Chrysler New Yorker yeah. or something. I was just having to think it had to be a big ass car with mm. a big ass hood where you could actually like, get in there and work on it from the it. top. Say what? I said where well, you could actually get into the thing and work on it from the top. <laughs> yeah, basically. Everything now is covered. But I, yeah. I like that. Getting Sorry, trapped right? under the hood of a car. Sorry. I mm-hmm. think that's hilarious. I'm just The image oh, yeah, of it. Just, a pair of legs hanging out of a car. Hey, Ted, great news. The 59er has, in fact, been rebuilt. Some people are saying even better. 
That's what I think, because I just drove by it this summer. All right, yeah, so it's back. It burned down once, but they rebuilt it. Men's room blank question. I fought the blank <laughs> and the blank one. 206 421 round. If you've ever driven up Route 2 to Leavenworth, you've seen that diner. I have not. I've never been to Leavenworth. What do you drink at Leavenworth? <laughs> I mean, look, I'm very partial to the Munchen House and the Big Bob uh, Bratwurst. I'm going to do bring up the Munchen. Uh, by the way, if you go to Auburn People's, oh, uh, no, the sports page. It is closed. Ah, oh, that was it, too. That was the sports yeah. page. So now they're saying go to the Spunky Monkey. That's the spot the to go. Monkey, the Spunky Monkey. monkey. The Spunky oh, Monkey. Here. Name alone, I'm in. Yeah. Ladies' nights every Thursday. <laughs> I feel like the Spunky Monkey might be ladies night every night. <laughs> okay, no. Based on the name. No way. <laughs> the Spunky no, Monkey. A, no. Ladies, come on down. Spunky Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> Get in here, you Spunky Monkey. <laughs> Doubles as a sperm bank. <laughs> yeah. Men's room, uh, blank question. Oh. I fought the blank and the blank one. <laughs> You've disgusted it, Mike. Just for Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Take a quick break and be right back with your calls next. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. $20 $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.